you doing happy homebrew weekly i can't promise i'm going to continually be able to find clips like that but i will try i have some stuff put away and i've just been transferring videos over to from vhs to the hard drive so there is are, i found some some stuff so we'll, we'll get it on we'll get it on these videos best we can week after week and some weeks we won't and some weeks we will but stay tuned because there's lots of fun stuff on videos of me over the years anyway um Today we're going to do something uh, which I got the idea from a guy on YouTube called Jeff Healy. Now, I don't know if that's his real name or whether it's just his pseudo name, but anyways, Jeff Healy is a home brewer. Hey, Jeff. And um, he did a Cooper's kit and he tried to time it to see how long it would take to brew one. Um, I think it took him over an hour to do it, but he, had, he didn't have a tripod and he was doing some calculations for temperature. I don't have those issues. I, I have a tripod and I, I don't, I'm not going to do calculations. I can pretty much get my temperatures straight from the tap just because I know my water and I know how the temperatures are coming out of it at this time of year. So I think I can do this in under 20 minutes. Okay. Um, but I don't know. Well, I don't, I've never really timed myself. I've never timed it. So this, what we're going to do, we're going to brew this beer, which is what I've got in my hand right now, a little cloudy. This does clear up after about 10 minutes of being in the glass. So when it warms up, it's pretty clear. So um, it's just chill haze. But what this is, is a, it's one of these. It's a Cooper's Lager kit. And instead of the built-in yeast, I used the yeast I've been using for several weeks now. And this will be Mambo number five for this yeast. This will be the fifth time I've used it. This is number four. Quickly, before we get started here, I got a timer, everything, everything's all set up. We'll just talk about this for a minute, but first. Clean, no off flavors, no apple flavors, no funny waxy flavors or crayons or, or butters or anything like that. Just a clean, pilsnery beer. And that's what it is. You can't get this when you buy, you know, commercial cores or bud or anything like that. You didn't, you don't, you don't get this. You get, this is much better. Sorry, cores and bud and all the other guys, but this is way better than what you guys do. They cut corners. They put all kinds of adjuncts and things. Yes, I'm going to add some dextrose to this kit. So that's an adjunct, I suppose. But anyway, so we're going to do this and we're going to time it and I'm not going to make any cuts but I might speed parts of it up. But I have a real-time clock here, so you'll be able to see, you know, I'm not gonna touch that, but you'll be able to see how long this actually takes. I don't care if it takes 20 minutes, 25, 30, doesn't matter. I'm gonna do this as easily as possible. Now, just as a prep um, comment, nothing has been prepared other than all of my equipment is clean. It's all put where it belongs, okay? So everything is, I've got a clean fermenter, Clean, clean pot, uh, sanitizer has already been made, which usually is the case. I use my sanitizer over and over, so, and all my tools and things are there. So everything is ready to go, but I haven't done anything in regard to brewing this beer. So there's no, none things been done ahead of time, okay? So that's that. And I am gonna use this yeast. We'll give it a little, 
It's been out of the fridge overnight, so it can come up to temperature. And again, this is a US 05 that is now going to be in its fifth generation going into this beer. And I'm not going to use the whole thing. I'm just probably going to go half or, you know, about there or something like that. And uh, I've got, I've got this and I've got what's left of this. And plus I've got another, whoa, shoot. There's a blooper right there. <laughs> got another batch over here going on that's using the same yeast. I split it off into two. So now we've got, you know, we'll have two jars of it. And yeah, we're going to have lots of this stuff. So we'll talk about that next week how I'm planning on multiplying this and working it so that I can use the same yeast for months and months and months of brewing. Brew after brew after brew. So that's what we'll talk about next week. But this week, we're going to brew this simple pre-hopped Cooper's lager, which isn't really going to be a lager because I'm not going to lager it. I'm not going to use lager yeast or anything like that. It's just going to be exactly what we've got here, which I almost spilt. And this would have that would have pissed me off quite a bit if I had spilt this. Look, at a little bit got on the jar there. Well, this blew the carpet. Wonderful. Are we ready to brew? And let's see how long it takes to make a good quality, not competition ready or anything like that. Because to do that, you got to put a little more heart and soul into this. But, you know, just to make a good quality session beer is all I want. That's all I need for the over the holidays. Well, not all, but okay, I'm, I'm ready. Let's put this out of the way so that doesn't happen again. That would have been a disaster. Okay, let's go.
straighten out my microphone. Okay, so um, that took um, 22 minutes and 26 seconds. Let's pause that. I cannot pitch the yeast right now because my wort is too warm. Now that's where, um, uh, you know, putting water in the fridge, uh, so you've got cold, cold water. The water's pretty cold right now, but it's just, we're just getting into winter, so um, it's not that cold, but it's, it'll be better in a couple of months. <clears throat> so putting water in the fridge and getting temperatures down. And what I usually do, I don't do math. I just, you know, I add cold water. I take my temperature. I add some warm water. You know, I mix the two until I get up to 20 liters. And then, you know, I got about 70 degrees Fahrenheit or 20 Celsius, whatever that is. So, <clears throat> and yes, I'm double fisted because I knew I would run out of beer while I was doing this. It always happens. Cheers. 
So I'm going to leave that for a little while, and I have a fan here. My little... Uh, took a fan out of a microheater that was broken. I'm just going to plug that in. And that is going to blow cold air onto the fermenter. And underneath this fuse box here, there's a hole where the wires come in, and it cold air comes in, so it's cold in this corner. Great for beer, uh, brewing beer. You know, so that fan's gonna make this cold. In about a half an hour, I'll be able to pitch that yeast. And I'll, I'll film it, okay? We'll just, you know. Anyways, now we've got that stopped. Let's move that out of the way and talk a little bit about these induction burners. I know this video's a bit long, but that's what I've got for you this week here. So, okay, this, when I was looking for an induction burner, um, I couldn't, it was very difficult for me to find one. And when I did finally see one, I grabbed it. It was like 70 bucks or 80 bucks or something like that at Walmart. This is only a 1300 watt um, induction burner. Now, these things are great. They're efficient. Um, you don't lose any heat up the side of the pot. Um, the thing doesn't get very hot. Like I just had it on for a while and I don't feel any like heat from underneath. So I think most of the energy is going toward heating the liquid that's in the pot. Okay, so they're pretty efficient. Um, they're great for um, heating things up like if or if you want to do like a mini mash where you have a pot that's, you know, you've got your mash in there and you want to keep it warm, put a blanket around it. You're not going to burn the blanket because this is not, this doesn't get hot. The only thing that gets hot is the liquid in the pot that you're heating up so you know if there's liquid in the pot and uh, if there's not then the pot's going to get really really hot so be careful with that but they're great they're great things but if you're going to buy one for home brewing get the highest wattage that you can possibly find 1800 watts is the maximum i can draw from my fuse box back here before the circuit breakers start throwing so if I can find an 1800 watt uh, induction burner, I will definitely be replacing this. And I do believe that you could probably bring, I don't know about, you know, nine gallons or eight gallons of water. I don't know about that. I think you're gonna need 220 volts, 30 amps for that. But to bring a good ma amount, you know, four gallons, three and a half gallons of water to a boil, and do hop additions and a, an extract beer. <clears throat> um, definitely, if you had a, an 1800 watt induction burner, I think that would work wonderfully. I haven't tried it, so keep the receipt, but I think that would be awesome for me when I find one. I don't know why we can't, I looked everywhere. I just, you know, I just, it's like, okay, Canada doesn't have them. This is only 1300 watts, so it, it'll do, you know, a couple gallons, but that's about it. Not much more than that. So I'm I'm on the prowl for a, a higher wattage one, and I'll probably sell this one. But um, that's my advice to you guys. These things are awesome. They're portable. They're light. You can take them camping if you if you got, if you've got electricity. You know where your camp stuff like that. You can you know make your dinners on it. It's a great great thing to have. That's my take on indu induction burners. Um, they're awesome. Um, if you've got the voltage and the amperage in your country and they make them like, you know, big, they're, they're wonderful. They're great things. Are they better than propane or electric? I don't know. Um, but certainly in my environment down here where I can't really do either because electric is not going to be efficient enough and, and gas, of course, I can't do in the basement. Uh, these things are awesome for that. And especially for doing what I just did, that's what this thing is used for a lot, is doing little things like that. So um, that's it. So that's going to cool down. It's already starting to cool down. I can feel it. So let me get myself another beer and we'll finish this video up. Okay. Thank you. So when I'm done, when this beer is finished, this is what I will get. A beautiful Pilsner style beer. 
and I've brewed um, IPAs like this. I mean, well, any you know pre-hopped beer kit, you can you can do this way, and you can do it in almost well, it's 22 minutes and 28 seconds. <laughs> so there you go. Um, for all you all grainers out there, this is probably not might not be for you. But, you know, for me, because beer is so expensive, I need to make beer, period. So that's it. If I'm going to drink beer, I need to make it. And this is an awesome way of doing it uh, for me and for a lot of other people as well. So everyone's got their own different reason for doing it. And, um, you know, sometimes I love to get in here and, and brew up a storm and make ad hop additions and do all these crazy things and try different grains and I experiment and all this stuff that's fun and that's amazing and sometimes I just come in here and go um I'm running out of beer so I need to do this in 22 minutes and all I gotta do is come back here and pitch the yeast done oh cleanup well cleanup is the pot rinse that out um the lid of course clean that up and the container I used for the, uh, for the, uh, you know, the dextrose, I do the five and seven thing. If you're not using dextrose, then you don't have to, you know, use that. You just use all your, do all your, your dry malt. If you're doing more dry malt than I did, then you need more water, more hot water, which means you might end up with more of a problem with cooling it down like I'm doing here. So that's just that. Um, that's why I found a balance between, you know, what I do. And this, this, these two things just need to be rinsed out. Uh, the little reservoir in there and the hose, just rinse them out, done, hang them back up, and I'm out of here. I'm going back on YouTube to find more ideas about how to make homebrew. And guys, thank you so much for your suggestions last week when I did that uh, sort of update video. That was awesome. That's as easy as it can be. Um, and if you want more out of brewing, then you do that, of course you've got that option that's the beauty of it is that everyone can do their own thing and nobody complains we hope so hey guys thanks for watching this homebrew weekly video please these shirts are only available for another 30 days or less so if you want one now is the time uh, other shirts are available it helps support what we do here and um, you get a shirt in return so it's not very expensive awesome stuff thank you guys We'll see you Friday night on vonlive.tv slash craigtube. Don't forget to check out my other YouTube channels. They're, all the links are down below. Everything you need to know is down there, except there's no beer there, but you'll have to do that yourself. It's easy. Okay. Thank you, guys. Cheers. 17brewcrew.com. 17.